he's already in town, so we don't have to pay him. <laughs> um, hopefully you had a chance to grab some mooncake and some tea, and um, I think some of you are sitting like really comfortably. Please don't fall asleep. I know those are very comfortable. Um, as you probably noticed, if you've been here before, uh, our executive director, Ben, Lau is actually in San Francisco, that's why you have me today. But anyway, he's in a meeting and hopefully um, he will bring us some good news in terms of how we can work with other Chinese American museums in the US and that's part of the reason why he's there instead of here. Um, so anyway, um, how many of you have never been to this museum before? Oh good, I always like to see that show of hands. Uh, we also have in the audience, um, State Representative Teresa Ma. Oh, here she is. I'm always like, over there. Oh, there she is. All right, thank you for being here uh, because it's important for us to hear these stories and to support our community. And for those of you who are actually from Chicago, that we have some brochures in the back, so take take one with you, and that will give you an idea of what we have. Um, I'm sure when you walk in through the front. Um, through the first floor, you saw our exhibition on the Chinese railroad workers. Um, I don't know if you're aware, this year is the 150th anniversary, and we were lucky enough to get it this year instead of doing it last year. Because, I mean, there's something about it. We got it for a whole year during the 150th anniversary. So grab a brochure, and also, if you're not already on our mailing list, um, there is a QR code in our brochure that you can just scan, and it'll take you to the sign up. Um, page, or you can actually just text it. Um, if you have a cell phone, most of us do, um, text CAMOC to 22828, but I'll leave this around. Um, so without further ado, I don't want to take up too much time because this is not about me. Um, so I want to introduce Gordon Chin real quick, who's standing over there. So Gordon Chin served as Executive Director of the Chinatown Community Development Center for 34 years prior to his retirement from this position in October 2011. <coughs> Under Gordon's leadership, the Chinatown CDC has developed over 3,500 units of affordable housing for senior, immigrant families, and formerly homeless individuals in many San Francisco neighborhoods. The Chinatown CDC is known nationally for its leadership programs for immigrant youth, families, and seniors. Gordon has served on the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission and the Recreation and Park Commission and many national boards, <laughs> including the National Coalition for Asian Pacific American Community Development. And in 2015, Gordon authored Building Community Chinatown Style, which is what he's going to talk to us about today. So, Gordon. Uh, uh, are the 
Young's in the house here. are from Chicago, right? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, uh, other cities uh, in the house here? Canada? Nothing. 
nothing compared to what we have to go through. Mm. Like, uh, lynchings and discrimination. And there were 400 Chinatowns at one time in the U.S., right? right? Most of them were burned out. Many of them were created after the Chinese worked on the railroads, right? And they just started a Chinatown to support the railroad workers. But do we remember any of those people? That's why commemorating the history of our community in so many ways is so important. And, you know, the railroad workers, it's not just a historical fact, right, but an artifact. That was an important part of our history. And the uh, discrimination they went through uh, affects our community even to this day. So it's not just about history. It's not just about honoring the past. It's about understanding what happened back then and how it's affected the evolution of our communities, our Chinatowns, you know, for the last 150 years. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in terms of commonalities of experience of all the Chinatowns <coughs> around the country. Right. Uh, Chicago was only one of the few, I think, who actually moved, right, 1912 from, from the Loop, from Clark Avenue, uh, to the south side. A lot of foresight there. Because every other Chinatown stayed and still fighting to stay. But your decision to move Chinatown to a less expensive place uh, in part contributed to the fact that you're not as gentrified. You're not suffering from as much gentrification as San Francisco, as Seattle, LA, or New York. And we'll, we'll talk more about that a little later. Because it doesn't mean that you won't suffer from gentrification in the years to come. Uh, is there one more thing about my family and uh, how it's important to me and how it's important to community, right, is to understand how families are different, right, and the history of our families are different. My father's side is primarily immigrant based, right, and my great grandfather came over his father sired seven children, uh, five boys and two girls. And the descendants of those seven children, uh, many of them are in this room. And it's amazing to me that uh, then my grand great grandfather remarried and had three more kids, including him for Henry. So amongst those 10 families in the Young clan, there are living descendants in nine of those families. Uh, the only one missing was uh, Uncle Gok Nam, who died in Burma. But we still have people here in nine, in every one of those families. And it, it's, it's a rare occurrence. And it makes me you know, really, really proud to be part of the Yang uh, family and, and the Yang clan. Uh, my mother's side, uh, and I haven't written a book about it. Maybe I'll write a book about family. But, uh, my mother's side reflects a different uh, experience, more of a Chinese American experience, in some respects similar to Chicago. But her mother, my grandmother, was born in this country in 1882. Uh, in uh, Pacific Grove, Monterey County. Uh, so, uh, and she uh, bore 13 children, my grandmother did. Uh, two died at childbirth, two were sort of adopted away. But the nine who remained uh, were all born in this country, including my mother in 1919. Now they were Chinese American kids, right? Uh, and so their Chinatown was different. Their Chinatown was similar to the Chinatown Auntie Oi grew up in. Everyone knew everybody. There was discrimination because you couldn't go outside much. But within the community, there was strength of family and strength uh, of community. And that was San Francisco Chinatown in, in the 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s. And then in my next book, you, you'll uh, get some glimpses of uh, interesting things on my mother's side. Right. She, uh, my grandmother was a Chinese opera fan, and uh, they lived in 
1928 on Grand Abbey where the old Sunsing Theater was, right upstairs, so she could uh, check out opera. You know, she was sweet on a lot of the opera stars. And my mother worked at a restaurant right downstairs. Uh, well, next door to my grandmother's place, on the second floor above the Sunsing Theater, was Bruce Lee's family. Uh, and I have a picture, uh, and Cindy, I found this in the album, you know, we discovered all this stuff uh, in my mom's house. We're still cleaning out my mom's house, you know, uh, six years after she passed, because we're lazy. But there's a lot of stuff. And she had this picture of Bruce Lee's, and my mother <coughs> wrote on every single photograph, so I knew it was true. Bruce Lee's father, Chinese opera star, and here was the date. Then she also had another picture of Bruce Lee's baby. So, uh, you know, my mom had a very interesting history as well. Uh, well, enough about me. Uh, the Chinatown Community Development Center, uh, or Chinatown CDC for short, uh, was founded on April Fool's Day, 1977. Uh, and we actually deliberately chose April 1st as our incorporation date uh, because we weren't sure we would survive. You know, we could just say April Fool's, we were just kidding. <laughs> right? uh, but it also was important because it sort of reflects my uh, outlook on life, which is never take uh, yourself too serious. Take your work very serious. Take your family and community very serious. But, uh, you know, I, I haven't been involved in this stuff to get rich. And Lord knows, work for nonprofits, and many of you do, uh, you do not get in this work to get rich. And even a state rep doesn't make that much money, right? <laughs> right. So, uh, uh, I retire 34 years later. And I, the one thing I'm most proud of is I uh, uh, didn't get arrested. Uh, and we... Uh, built a lot of leadership. Uh, leadership, uh, uh, not only speaking out as advocates, but quiet leadership. Yeah. Seniors, and I told Esther at lunch, the Community Tenants Association that we helped to form is the single largest tenant association in the entire city of San Francisco. 1,600 members, uh, and very active. Uh, our youth leadership programs uh, have really su su succeeded in developing a lot of young leadership uh, in the Chinese community. Uh, and, and some of them have, are working in very important positions all over the city now because it's been around 20 years. Uh, and then finally immigrant leaders in families. And it's really hard to uh, keep immigrant families involved and active in their community because they're working. They're working 16 hours a day take care of the kids. But children, families, and seniors. And together, uh, as an intergenerational power block, can be very important. And some of the most heartwarming uh, moments I've had is to see uh, uh, youth and seniors working voter registration together. Seniors and families supporting each other's issues down at City Hall. Our, our youth-led pedestrian safety programs. And so many Chinese, San Francisco suffer from huge uh, death rates in pedestrian safety because of traffic and what have you. Right? And, and Chinese seniors in particular, Asian seniors, disproportionately uh, have lost their lives uh, in automobile accidents. So our youth, led the campaign for better pedestrian safety on behalf of their parents and grandparents. So it's that kind of philosophy of intergenerational uh, leadership and intergenerational uh, organizing uh, that I think is very powerful in any community, in any community. Uh, and I, as I mentioned in my book, uh, sometimes we do stereotype uh, our seniors as, uh, well, they may have wisdom, but they ain't got no energy. Uh, and we stereotype our youth.
by saying, well, they have a lot of energy, but you know, they don't know anything. <laughs> well, I have seen so many seniors. Esther is one of them. I'm not calling you a senior. <laughs> <laughs> well, where is he? I've, I've seen so many seniors who have so much energy and strength, right? They, 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 and they just keep on going. Uh, but there are also a lot of seniors who are not as wise as, as they're giving credit for. <laughs> okay. Then I've seen young people, 14, 15 years old, you know, uh, who are just so smart and wise and just sort of see things maybe a little clearer than, than older people. But I've also seen a lot of young people who are absolutely lazy and don't have any energy at all. So, uh, you know, don't typecast, stereotype each other, right? Whether it's racial, you know, gender, or generational. So uh, I think with that philosophy, it's helped me, you know, re really respect everybody. And I try to use the best of everybody uh, in the work that we do. I'm not going to get into some of the other stuff the organization has done. Uh, it's one of the major affordable housing developers in the city. Uh, I think the unit total is probably over 4,000 units now. Uh, but I will say one thing. I'm really proud that Chinatown CDC is not only that, well, we only serve Chinese. Or we only serve Asians. You can't do that in a city like San Francisco, and nor should you. So Chinatown CDC you know, has done projects that are primarily, uh, at least three of them, uh, Russian immigrants. Uh, three projects serving the homeless, primarily African American. And the last project uh, in the Tenderloin, 200 units that we built uh, about 15 years ago, uh, has a large tendency of uh, 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 Muslim families, mostly from Yemen. And that place is, in one of our buildings, has become sort of a hub of organizing of Muslims in that neighborhood and in the city. Right? So we can't be ethnocentric, right? And wherever you are, you know, whether you're in Canada or Chicago or here. And we have to, and we deal with that all the time, right? We deal with it in our own community. Well, why are you serving all those other people? Right? Well, we live in the same, in the same city. And those other people got similar issues that you do. And we need to break down those barriers, right, and understand that, well, your immigrant experience is not that different than what the Muslims are going through right now. Or what our ancestors went through, you know, uh, in 1850, you know, when uh, Chinatown was subject to so many riots and anti-Chinese uh, legislation. So, you know, with those words, uh, let me just show you some glimpses of some of the work of the organization. And if I could figure out how to use this clicker thing. I hope, uh, I hope you can see it. The screen's kind of far away from you guys, right? Oh. Uh, well, that's the title of my book. Uh, and I, I only brought like 12 copies back there because I had to carry them in my luggage. But, uh, and I don't do that square credit card thing, so it's only cash or check only 20 bucks. Uh, okay. Well, you can't see this. This is sort of a grid map of Chinatown uh, showing some of the major uh, highlights in the community. But it, it's it's really not that much bigger than Chicago Chinatown. I mean, San Francisco is only 22 square blocks. So when you add in your new Chinatown Square, I think China, uh, Chicago Chinatown is almost up there with New York and San Francisco in terms of size. It's always important to delineate whether you're talking about the core commercial area or a broader area that's primarily residential. Right? And I don't, and we'll talk about that later. I don't know to what extent Chinatown has expanded, right, on the other side of Chinatown Square or, or down uh, south further, uh, as other Chinatowns have. Uh, as my mother and father, you can obviously tell uh, that we have a very good-looking family, all started with Uncle Henry, of course. Uh, uh, Mom, Lu 